Welcome back everybody, it's Lucas Baysmore, and welcome to my channel, My Journey Through Lambda School. Let's dive right in. Okay everybody, uh, welcome back. It is week three, day four, and day three, because I missed yesterday. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about yesterday, because it was JavaScript number three on the fundamentals, and over the past yesterday and today, we've gone over this, constructors, prototypes, um, understanding binding more fully, uh, creating classes, super. So again, it's been another dense couple of days. Uh, not a ton to just showcase, unfortunately, uh, because it's all just working with these you know, classes, objects, prototypes, and so it's not uh, the most fun thing to show off, but I've got a couple of things here for you. So, like I said, these past couple of days have been uh, JavaScript 3, in particular it was about using this keyword and uh, using constructors and prototypes. And uh, we would, uh, let's see if I could, yeah, understanding, you know, actual global objects, and so <clears throat> understanding the actual differences between uh, window binding, so the global scope, um, implicit binding, which is basically the concept of everything left of the dot, understanding explicit binding through call, apply, and bind, and then lexical binding. Um, no, 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 sorry, sorry, new binding which is basically this being bound to something with new. And there's a fifth one that we really haven't, it's, I guess it's a, uh, it's a subset of implicit binding, but it was through using arrow functions and how arrow functions don't automatically bind to this. So it's implicitly bound to whatever's called upon it, which once we get to React, we'll have some you know particular implications on how functions get called and passed around. However, Going through that right now was really, really, really um, helpful in understanding what the hell I've done previously. So anyway, um, JavaScript 4, which was today, was primarily through use, um, was primarily doing everything we did yesterday. So we would create a function that was an object that would be our class, and then we would add on literally calling prototype, and then add the methods on there that we wanted to the prototype, and then using um, using dot call and binding this to it in order to actually do the prototypical inheritance. So big fancy word for the children get whatever the parents got in terms of the um, prototype inheritance, really. So JavaScript 4 was the same conceptual thing as yesterday. However, it was using the class keyword with pseudo classical inheritance and constructor functions and props, or not props necessarily, but a super and how you can pass those attributes or props um, across them. So uh, again, I mean, I'm scrolling through here. This is just the lecture for today. Really, really dense stuff, but I'll show you what this ended up looking like. So, and I realize I need to blow this up here so you can kind of see what the hell I'm looking at. But uh, as you can see here, you know, we would start with a function and we're describing basically the attributes of this function that we want and then defining the prototype on that function and then this creating a child function, child function being described because we've got this parent.call and then again assigning the prototype, actually the game object's prototype, which in this case is the parent and so on and so forth. Um, so kind of unintuitive, but this is what's working under the hood of when we're using classes and constructor functions. So um, it was really, really good to see all of this. It was, that again, that under the hood kind of knowledge. So uh, what I did here was I created a game that uh, we've had a class of a humanoid where you could declare an enemy and a villain and basically uh, based upon some stats and some weapons that they had, they would uh, flip a coin to determine if they're going to attack or if they're going to heal, and then run through this loop here that while they're, they have health points, they would eventually kill each other. And so if we go to our number three, 
Oh, you see here, that's exactly what happens. So my little guys battle it out to the death and they console out how long it took to get, for one of them to get to zero. So if we do it again, so we've got, um, oh, that's just the last call, not the actual start of the game. So if I do it again, we will get a different result. And so here this game took 25 turns and it's just randomly doing this. But the cool part about this is that this game is created technically at random and it's using, um, you know, bindings, it's using the uh, villain ob class that I created and uh, it's inheriting some of the things like the attacker healed, it's inheriting from the humanoid, but it's also inheriting the um, base attack and base healing and health points from character stats. So this was really fun to kind of put together. And then today we did the same thing, but let me, oh, it already did it for me. Ooh, too big. Doing the same thing, but now we're using little class constructor. And I use props to just get in the habit of doing that. But, you know, creating our methods that are on that, our character stats and our methods there. Humanoid extends the uh, parent object that we've got, constructor prop, you know, props. Very, very, very similar to what I've done in React before. So seeing this again, it's like, oh my gosh, this makes way more sense now as to how this is working. Um, so now I did, a, I did a thing where I created a special action. Now this isn't probably the most elegant solution, but regardless, I gave my villain the ability to summon demons, which is just a multiplier of two on its attack. And I gave my hero a call for backup action, which is a multiplier of eight on its base healing. Um, and then again, I had them battle it out to the death with my start battle function here. And so when I call that, we get our, our battles now. And so these are much more interesting battles because they can call for backup. So healing for 24 points or uh, again, calling for backup. Let's see. Yep. The bank, villain summon demons. So this was really fun to put together and actually get to work using all the things that we had learned over the past couple of days. So this was a fun little project throughout the day that we did. Uh, but again, I am not jealous of somebody that's coming in and learning this for the first time because it is a lot of abstraction. It's a lot of um, just non-intuitive things that, you know, come about with programming. So uh, Lambda School, I feel like th there are definitely some students that are struggling right now and I've even spent time myself helping some of these students trying to figure out how this, uh, literally how this works. <laughs> um, and uh, coming up with good analogies is hard sometimes, but this is dense material. And so that's why Lambda School, again, tells you to get into as much JavaScript as you can beforehand, because that's only gonna help you. So my little piece of advice here would be, if you start in a month or two, take at least 20 to 30 minutes every day and do a little bit of JavaScript. It's only going to help you understand what the heck is going on when it comes time. So I'll finish with that one. Let's jump to some of the resources. Okay, so not a ton of resources right now. A lot of this, you just kind of have to Google. I'll give you some of the ones that I thought were some helpful ones. Uh, this is a GitHub repo on eyeballing your this context with implicit binding, explicit binding, um, understanding, you know, are you in global context? So this was pretty nifty. It helped me kind of Realize that one. Another one on implicit binding, the prototype based inheritance and prototype chain in JavaScript. So understanding the prototype chain is something that again is not super intuitive, but uh, looking at this was another great one that helped me understand what's kind of going on with these prototypes. And then Wes Boss has a great article on when not to use arrow functions. So arrow functions are great for certain things. And they're not great for other things, particularly with constructors and objects and new functions or using new to create, you know, new objects. So, um, that was a good helpful article. And if I haven't mentioned this before, this guy here, fun, fun function, uh, he has got, and let me just make myself smaller. 
Fun Fun Function. This guy has a great series of videos that talk about all of this stuff. Uh, talk about closures, um, reducing maps, higher order functions, you know, things that we've gone over the past couple of days. And then in object creation, same guy with more hair, but this binding, prototypes, new, object create, class keyword. So this actual series as well, I haven't dove into all of it, but he makes learning this stuff really entertaining. So would highly recommend subscribing to Fun Fun Function. Great guy. And so that, that was the, the biggest set of resources that I had. A lot of the resources have, have kind of come and gone in terms of looking uh, for what I need based upon the question that I had at the time. But hopefully some of these will help you out. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is Build Week. So I've met, said it before, I'll say it again. The fourth week of every month is Build Week. And with Build Week, all of Lambda School stops. We all start working on projects for a whole week. We work across cohorts and even across um, like categories. So I'm in web dev, some of the people are in iOS, other people are in data science. We all come together basically to work on different projects. The project that I'm gonna be working on, I'm really excited to do this because I think it's gonna be really fun, is a game called Guess Who. So it's gonna take a random tweet and then pull the faces of several different potential tweeters and the object of the game is to guess who said what tweet and it's going to start with just the presidents that we've had or candidates for presidents uh, however the game because it's using twitter feed is technically endless because people say stupid shit all the time um, but i'm really excited to work on that i will just be working on not the actual base application but i will be working on the um, just a landing page. So basically utilizing the advanced CSS, not a lot of JavaScript, but most of the, mostly the advanced CSS and HTML stuff working together to put together a good landing page. And I've built uh, mobile apps before. So building a landing page for a mobile app for me will be a lot of fun to do it again. And with my new CSS knowledge, I think it'll be fun to create some fun animations and some scrolling effects. And so we'll see uh, how, how all that goes. But with that, that's all I've got for you today. Not a ton of information here, but uh, got, I've got Sprint Challenge tomorrow, and um, it's gonna go over all the stuff that we've done with JavaScript. I'm super confident I'll be able to knock it all out. No biggie on that one. Uh, hopefully I will be able to help some other students if they need to, and um, get a good weekend rest. We've gotta start packing and moving here. So I will be busy doing that. But that is all I've got for you guys today. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, feel free to drop them in the description. Or son of a, I say it every time. Feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and I will put in all of the uh, stuff that I showed you today <laughs> into the description. Uh, with that, if you've liked this, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, let me know. More than happy to share anything about Lambda School with you guys. So I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>